we can measure an angle in a couple different ways. First way is let's start with degrees. Something that you're probably familiar with is if I were to start again from the initial side and go completely all the way around, that forms a circle, and we know that that's 360 degrees. So then if I were to start again from the initial side and just go halfway, then half of the 360 would be 180 degrees. So now let me go maybe half of the 180, again, still starting from the initial side, and just going a quarter of the way, then this would be 90 degrees. So every quadrant is accounting for 90 degrees, so then one more here, uh, 90, 180, so 270. We give us the angle measure at all the different axes. So if we put this together, starting again from the initial side, in standard position, if I didn't go anywhere, this would be considered zero degrees. Or well, if I went the entire way around, that's 360 degrees. So then every quarter would be another 90 degrees. It's about 180. Add another 90, we get 270. So let's do a couple examples of drawing angles based on what all the axes represent. Okay, so for example, let's draw each angle. Let's try something in the first quadrant. So let's say that theta is 60 degrees. So again, starting from standard position, we know that a quarter of the way is 90 degrees. So 60 would be about, well, would be two thirds of that. Let's say maybe that theta is 200 degrees. A quarter of the way is 90, then 180, so it's got to be a little bit past 180. So again, still starting from standard position. So 20 degrees past 180. Let's try a negative angle. So let's say that theta is negative, uh, let's say maybe 290 degrees. So starting from standard position, moving in a negative direction, we would have 90, 180, 270, so a little bit past there. Again, realize the angle is going clockwise. Let's try one more. Let's say that theta is, say, 400 degrees. If this is more than the 360, so the first thing I would do is go 360 to get to 40 or 400. We need to go 40 more. 